is hello viewers. Yeah, your science teacher as usual, Ms. Gamgo Bosco, uh, still the head teacher wisdom center, Nivugesera, that's the Karumuna. Yeah, uh, I've come back again that we, we go through, we, yes, our activities, daily work, as usual. Yeah, so uh, this time uh, we are going to look at uh, still chicken farming and majorly we want to begin with uh, poultry vices. Okay, so uh, looking at this briefly, uh, last time we did looked at uh, types of chickens, okay? Uh, we classified the broilers, the layers, and the purpose. We went ahead looking at different ways of feeding chickens, okay? That was done. Yes, uh, we went ahead also looking at chicken diseases where we saw those which are called parasitic diseases like coccidiosis. Uh, yes, we looked at uh, the, the, uh, the ascarids. Those are, that is now, those two, they are, we say they are, uh, they are parasitic diseases. And then so we went ahead looking at infectious, which are the, which are the uh, salmonella, okay? And uh, infectious bronchitis, those common four, yes. So if you are asked, before we start today's lesson, remember, if you are asked, mention, uh, actually look at the parasitic and infectious. So we said the, in parasitic we had uh, coccidiosis, okay, and ascarids. And then uh, for infectious, we had infectious bronchitis and uh, salmonella. Those are were common chicken diseases. So this time, kick off with the, uh, the poultry vices. Yes, so poultry vices, simply we look at bad habits in birds. Yes, just like human beings, you find that uh, you also still and find some misunderstandings in birds. Uh, yes, we also find so these are called bad habits in birds, simply. Yes, uh, so uh, we can look at examples of poultry vices, okay? Uh, immediately, these bad habits in birds, we have uh, commonly have egg eating, okay? Where you find the, the, air, the, the hens or the birds will begin eating eggs, which they laid. We have then uh, you find uh, the feather pecking, where they will begin picking or pecking yeah, the, the feathers from other fellow birds. Then you have toe pecking. They go on pecking okay, of the birds. Yeah, then now you have cannibalism. Cannibalism here, you find that immediately uh, the hen is pecked and then eaten up by the fellow chi chicken. Okay, you find that this is a very bad habit in the birds. Yes, so uh, these poultry vices, okay, can take us to the causes of bad habits in the birds. You want to see what causes these bad habits and then uh, the prevention. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, look at briefly. If since you have looked at the the, the, the bad habits in the birds, the, the feather pecking, the top pecking, cannibalism, what will be the causes? Uh, simply, when you see look at uh, what causes these bad habits, uh, like egg eating. Uh, normally, uh, when uh, when birds lay eggs and you don't collect them in time at time, or, or yes, on time you find they'll end up, uh, yes, eating those eggs. Uh, and then uh, another thing which can also cause like egg eating, immediately uh, it's a sign of lack of calcium in the birds. So when you see your birds uh, begin eating the eggs, know that they might be lacking calcium. So provide them feeds with enough calcium and then collect your eggs in time. Another thing, uh, looking at like feather pecking, top pecking can be caused majorly uh, in case there's a, let's say, uh, strong light, yes, in the room. Yeah, you find they are moving and stepping on each other. So it's always they feed, they, uh, they step on each other. So we should look at a minimum or medium light or enough light, not too much. So strong light in the poultry house can lead to feather pecking, to top pecking. And then uh, you find that uh, it's very important to check on that. And then also uh, overcrowding in birds is not good. When you put many birds uh, in the same place, in a small house, a small coop, you find that uh, they will easily end up, okay, stepping on each other and then uh, are then pecking, uh, causing cannibalism, okay, which is uh, not good. So we should make sure that the chicken coop uh, is actually having uh, enough space, no overcrowding, okay, having uh, actually medium light, not too much light, which can uh, cause them actually to go on also having paper pecking because of uh, losing sight and stepping on each other. And uh, lastly, that of egg eating. So we should also collect eggs in time, uh, yeah, and provide animals, birds with enough feeds with calcium. And then uh, that can uh, kick us 
push us to the next part. Yes, uh, since you have seen the way that are uh, of, of preventing the uh, port devices, then uh, we can move to the importance of chicken farming. Remember, we defined last time chicken farming as the practice of rearing chickens, okay? Okay, or, or rearing chickens for purposely domestic or commercial purposes. So when we come here, we look at, uh, yes, we can say chickens are reared all over the world, actually, because of their great economic, agriculture, and nutritional importance. So we want, we want, we want to, look, to look at uh, the importance of chicken farming put in three parts. Look at uh, the economic importance, look at the agricultural importance, and then nutrition importance. Yes, let us look at one by one. When we talk about nutrition importance, what do you mean here? Majorly in terms of feeding, yes? So we can say, like here, chickens are a source of food. Yes, this is very important. Uh, people, yes, feed on this, whereby you find that uh, we get, we collect eggs, yes? Which is now that food, source of proteins, and then uh, meat. So it's meat, they are meat and, 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 and egg, and, and, uh, the eggs, they are good source of proteins. In simple terms, you can get two points by, chair, by saying chickens are kept for eggs. And then we also say they are also kept for meat production. These two points, we can group them as source of food, which is very important. Yes, we can see here. You see, this is meat. Uh, yes, it's a good to eat chicken. It's source of proteins. Look at the eggs also. They are good source of proteins. Okay, so to get more points, we can say uh, uh, chickens are so a uh, good source of meat. The second point, and say number two, they are good source of, prot of eggs, which we combine and say source of food. This is very important. And then uh, we can move to the second point. They can also ask you the economic importance of keeping chicken. Here we look at in terms of money, majorly. Yes, look at this point. We can say. Uh, chickens are a source of employment. Here meaning that uh, uh, you can rear birds and, uh, and give jobs to people around your community, serving the community, whereby people who might be unemployed, they can be employed to serve like a feeding, as that's the labor, uh, the veterinary officer providing medicine. Uh, yes, even people are going to construct, uh, let's say the chicken coop and all that on your farm. These are all employed. So it's a good source of employment. Uh, yes, and then another importance here, we can say source of income, whereby farmers sell eggs and these birds to get money. This is very important. Yes. Yes, so this can be sold and get money, which is very important. Uh, we can move a look at this picture here. Yes, you can see uh, people selling eggs in the market. Yes, this source of income. And it's, yes, it's very important. It's also employment because those who are going to help transport the eggs, yes, uh, yes, those who, uh, you, you will find that uh, they also be getting, you have to pay them, which is actually a business, and then you get money. And then, uh, it's very important, you can move on next point here. Yes, uh, chicken feather can also be used to fill pillows and davits. Davids can be like uh, the bed sheets, yes, yeah, yes, bed sheets, bed covers, yes. So these are the ones that are filled with the feathers. You can sell them, which is also uh, economic importance. And then uh, we can go to the another part, agricultural importance. We want to see, yes, how it's useful uh, uh, to agriculture, which means that. Uh, Green crops and rearing animals. Yes, let us see. For chicken bones and eggshells can be grown to make feeds for animals. Yes, this is the cultural importance when you have animals like cattle and to feed them, yes, on the commercial feeds, whereby you can get their shells, okay, and you crush them to get uh, commercial feeds for, for animals like cattle. And then uh, I will look at the droppings from chickens can be used as manure on farms. This is very important in agriculture. You can find that you increase your soil fertility by having this manure. Uh, we looked at the types of manure. This can be put in a classified farmyard manure, which is very good in improving soil fertility. 
uh, we move on, we can say chickens are fed on insects that destroy our crops. So to the farmers, you find that the pests which can destroy, yes, our crops, you can find that uh, these hopes are to eradicate them from the environment as they feed, as they feed them on insects. And then we can move ahead and look at uh, this table here. Yes, uh, the following table gives a simple vaccination program of chickens. Yeah, yeah, to, uh, looking at the importance of chickens, uh, we need to see that uh, we also make sure that we vaccinate, that our, our importance can, can, can come to pass. Uh, looking at uh, vaccinating or providing drugs to chicken in order to give them immunity to fight against diseases. Yes, uh, we can look at, uh, at, at, at a given age and then the vaccine. So, uh, yes, chicks of one day to 16 weeks, okay? Uh, majorly, they are either attacked by salmonella. So what should you do? And uh, provide vaccine, which are called salmonellosis, okay? Vaccine, this is very important. It will help birds to be strong, to have a strong, strong immunity against salmonella. Uh, yes, and remember, okay? Yeah, we talked about, uh, yes, this is in birds, talked about salmonella. This is very uh, common, this is in birds, okay? Uh, yes, uh, we can move on. Oh, uh, here we say that this, this is an infectious disease in birds. Then we can move on uh, next, see, one day to nine, nine days. Yes, yes, you can vaccinate your birds with, with the co coxidiosis vaccine. These ones help the birds to get immunity against coccidiosis. Remember, coccidiosis is very common in birds. This is a parasitic disease, okay? It's spread by parasites. So it's very common in birds. And then we can check here. Birds of 16 days to 20 weeks, okay? Yeah, they always also suffer in infectious bronchitis, okay? Newcastle, uh, the ascarids. So... Uh, this is okay. Yes, uh, these ones also are parasite. This this is uh, infectious, uh, okay? Disease of the birds. So what to do here? Provide them with infectious bronchitis vaccine. Also provide Newcastle disease vaccine. These ones will help the birds to get immunity against diseases. So it's very important to vaccinate your birds. Uh, and then, uh, okay. So this can push us to the methods of rearing chickens or systems of raising chickens. This is very important. As we raise chicken, there are different ways we can do this. Uh, possibly we can look at four systems of raising chickens. In chicken farming, we can look at the first method here as the free range system. This is a very common system, okay? Yes, uh, raising birds. We are going to go ahead and look at this. Uh, and then we shall also, we shall also look at uh, the depleter system. Uh, we shall look at the fold system. And last, we shall look at uh, the battery system or battery cage system. Yes. Uh, looking at number one first, let's look at the free range system. For the free range system, yes, here birds are left to move freely, okay, in an area and feed by themselves. This is the cheapest mean or method of feeding or raising chickens, okay? You can see here, just at home, you can do this at your home, you can buy some chickens, okay? Yes, raise them, uh, provide feeds to them, or even when, yes, you can just, as you leave them, they can feed freely to them. In your free time, you can give them grains, they'll come around, or they go feed on themselves. It's a free range system. Birds take care of themselves. You open for them in the morning. You can see here, this is a homestead. And then in the evening, they come back. Okay? Yes, uh, in the shelter. So this is very important. Also, a cheap way. It's very cheap. If they ask you advantages of free range system, you can simply say, it is cheap, okay, to raise birds. It's very important. And then our birds get enough exercise. This is quite not no, good not. The disadvantage of a range system is that uh, these birds are exposed to predators. Predators can be, uh, can be animals that hunt other animals for food, okay? Yes, uh, this is like, look, look at the hawks, the, the eagles, okay? Uh, yes, this, you can find that uh, they can easily hunt these birds. 
The hawks are carnivorous birds, so they can easily hunt the chicks, okay? And other, 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 other wild animals. So those are like kind of disadvantages. They, can, they are easily exposed yeah, to predators. And uh, it's also hard to control disease outbreak if birds are left to move freely. Uh, and then this can push us to the second system or method of, of rearing birds. When you want to rear your chicken, use another system called deep litter system. In this system here, we find that uh, chicken, chickens are put, okay, in apartment or in a permanent structure, okay, in an ankle structure which has got litter on the ground, okay. This litter is very good at uh, in collecting manure. It becomes very easy, which is difficult in a free range system. Yes. So uh, look at this here. You see. This is an enclosed structure, okay? Uh, this is litter, okay? Where the name comes, deep litter system. So this is litter on the ground, on the floor. And then um, uh, look at the, this fee, uh, fountain drinker where they can easily get water from. Look at, you can also put the feeds here, okay? You can put water here for feeding the birds. This is very important, yes. Uh, if you look at the advantages of this system, actually, this system uh, is manageable and uh, is very good in yielding in terms of feeding animals, like birds. Uh, advantages of the of litter system, you find that uh, uh, it is, it is uh, easy to control disease because birds are in a room. So here you can find that uh, you can easily vaccinate your birds, okay? And uh, they can't easily be infected from us because they're in a given room. And the room also have enough space for exercise. So also birds kept in deep the system, they have enough exercise because of the space. Uh, yes. Uh, it's also easy to collect eggs because birds are within an enclosed uh, permanent structure. Yes, this is also good. And then uh, disadvantages, you can say, needs labor, enough labor, because not, not provide the feeds they want feed which is not the case with this free range system. Free range system, birds will grow will and feed freely. But for the Peter system here, they are in an enclosed structure. So if you don't feed them, they want to get feed. So it's, it needs enough labor, okay? It is also uh, cost expensive in terms of constructing the structures. That can be a disadvantage, but uh, it has got to move the advantages. And uh, this is like the common system of raising or rearing animals, even here in Rwanda. Okay, uh, I have another system here. We shall look at the fold system. This is like a traditional system where chickens are kept or reared in enclosed movable structure, which you can move place to place. Okay, yes, uh, these structures are moved to new places every day to prevent the spread of diseases and pests. I look at this here. You can see this is like a form of a basket. Turn down so you can, people can, this can be made at home. It's a traditional method of uh, raising chickens. You can, uh, the, this, uh, the advantage here is that uh, uh, it is cheap, okay? You can read uh, from home, you can have your chickens, okay? Raised in a, in a fold system just like this. Uh, it's an enclosed system. You can easily move it to another place in case of avoiding pests and diseases spread. So we can see advantages, majorly commonly can talk about uh, it, they are cheap, it's cheap to raise birds. Another advantage you can say that uh, it is also easy to control pests and diseases because you can easily move, uh, yes, to another place. You can move the structure from one place to another place. Uh, and then uh, for the disadvantages here, you can find that uh, Birds in fold system do not get enough exercise because just in an enclosed uh, yes, space, okay, which, which is just moved. So this can be a disadvantage to birds that they do not get enough exercise. Uh, and also requires feeding because uh, if you leave them freely, it also requires labor because don't provide feeds to them, they won't eat. They want to feed, yes. Um, then uh, we can look at the last one, the last system of feeding birds or, or method of raising birds, like chicken. It is called the battery system. In the battery system, 
Uh, it's the method of keeping or raising chicken. Okay, where we keep or where we keep or rear chickens in cages. So simply somebody can say the method of raising chicken in cages. Okay? Yes. Uh, in this system here, okay, birds uh, you find that uh, they have got a sloping floor which can help in collecting eggs. Uh, it is uh, an advantage in this way. So this can take us. Uh, by the way, before we go far, this is a modern, one of the modern ways of raising or rearing chicken. Okay? Uh, if we look at uh, the advantages, we can say uh, chickens are fed okay, and watered in their cages. One of the advantages is that uh, it is easy to maintain individual records, records of birds. You can see here, each bird here and the eggs are laid here. Each bird here and the eggs are red and then they will drop here. So you can find that uh, it is quite easy to keep individual records of birds knowing uh, on a day how many eggs have been laid by each egg, by each, each, each bird. Yes, another advantage also here is quite easy to control diseases because each bird you can keep uh, in a cage. This is very important. Uh, and then uh, it's also easy to feed birds because you keep, you provide feeds, okay, water in each cage. Yes, uh, we can look at disadvantages here of, of battery cage system or battery system. Uh, the first is that uh, it is a very expensive method of rearing chicken because uh, in terms of buying this cage here, okay, uh, in terms of feeding is also expensive, okay. This is one of the disadvantages, okay, of the battery cage system. Uh, and then, uh, so this brings us, uh, yes, to the of the but uh, we can simply now look at uh, have these questions because uh, you need to have more revision on your own in your, in your free time. Look at uh, this, okay? You can be asked these uh, the conditions of a good chicken house, okay? Look at, uh, okay, types of chicken braids. They will ask you, we discuss this work here. So check, yeah, you can ask, define intubation, cannibalism, quarantine. So these terms, we have been looking at them. Go ahead and look at all these questions, yes, which you can be asked. Uh, yes, so we can uh, move. Uh, yes, look at uh, these products from, from feathers will be asked. Uh, yes, you have a number of questions, okay, activities to go through in your free time. Check, look at this. Which, part, which parts are they, are they made from, the, the, the products? The products here, they can ask from the parts they are made from. Have time and look. Look at that. Uh, then you can also ask users, uh, name two other users of the past named. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, good. Look at the methods of rearing chicken. Okay, yes. They ask you, look at this all. Have time and look at these questions. Uh, and then uh, uh, simply we can look at the last uh, two numbers here. Yes. Uh, you can be asked to draw an egg and name all the parts with the functions. Uh, we are going to look at this just from now. And then uh, also look at draw the digestive system of a bird and name of the parts with the functions. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Let us look at this uh, as we come to the side. Uh, so you can be given an activity. Like here. The diagram below is of a fertilized egg of a hen. Study it and answer questions that follow. So look at this diagram here, it's a diagram of a fertilized egg, okay, an egg of a bird, of a chicken. So we asked, Roman number one, look at the ask, name of the parts marked P, okay, P, Q, R, and S. Yes, uh, uh, I didn't even other parts, just look at these parts here. And then uh, we go on. Yes, from part P, yes. Uh, let us check on our diagram. Part P on diagram. Yes, you can see here. This is the, the outer part, which is the eggshell. Okay? Eggshell. Yeah, the eggshell simply, they can, uh, you look, can look at its function. This part, you can see the outer part of the egg. Its part has got majorly two functions. And the main function is that it protects the inner parts of the egg, okay? 
And then the other part, the other function is that uh, it also allows gases exchange. Yes. Uh, so they can ask you, apart from protection, which other function, okay, is the eggshell? We can say it also allows gases exchange, okay, where exchange of oxygen and, uh, with, and uh, giving out carbon dioxide and then getting in oxygen, that's allowing gases exchange. Uh, if you come to part Q, part Q, okay, uh, look at this part here. Yes, uh, this part Q uh, is the albumin, okay, albumin. Yes, uh, this part here, if you look at the function majorly, uh, it is, uh, uh, it, it contains, okay, or it provides proteins, okay? Yes, proteins, uh, talk about uh, uh, mineral salts. So, majorly can contain, prote provide proteins, mineral salts, okay? And water, yes, uh, to the, let's say maybe to the, to the growing end, okay? Remember, this part contains proteins, water, and minerals, okay? Part R, uh, it can be uh, the chalaza, okay? Okay? Chalaza, or oh, twisted albumin. You can see it as it is twisted. Yes, if we ask the importance of the chalaza, or oh, twisted albumin, it is twisted. This holds the yolk in position. Remember, part S is yolk, okay? This holds the chela, the, 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 the chela the, or twisted albumin holds the egg yolk in position. Uh, this takes us to part S. Yes, part S uh, is the, the egg yolk or just yolk. We can say egg yolk. Okay? Looking at the importance of function of the egg yolk, this here, this one, uh, contains proteins and fats, okay? Yes, uh, which are provided, or oh, hope, the, 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 egg, the inner part here, the germinal disc, okay? Yes, or the embryo to grow. So majorly, uh, this one here, they can say, we can say part S provides proteins and fats, okay? To the, to the germinal disc or embryo. So looking at these two, the, uh, yes, the egg yolk, okay? and the albumin. The similarity is that both of them provide, okay, proteins, proteins, okay? And then, uh, uh, then uh, we'll look at, uh, we say this one can provide proteins, okay, water and mineral salts. For the, for yolk, the yolk pro provides proteins and the fats. So how are they similar? Part S and part Q. Both of them provide, provide proteins, okay? Yes, they're important, very important in that. Okay, uh, this can move us uh, uh, to part T, yes? Let's look at part T here, the diagram. The inner part here, part T here, uh, this is the, the embryo or germinal disc. You can say embryo, okay? Embryo or germinal disc, okay? Germinal disc. Yes. Uh, this part here, why do you call it germinal disc? This germinal disc here, or the embryo, is the part that develops into a chick. Okay? This part here. Just as uh, well the egg, let's say the egg is incubated for, 20, for 21 days, this part develops into, into a chick. So it's called embryo or germinal disc. So if you ask the importance of the embryo or germinal disc simply say develops into a chick. Yeah, and uh, that's a young one. Then let's go to part U. Part U from the diagram here, this space here, okay? This is simply called air space. Air space. Yeah. Air space, if you look at the function, uh, majorly here, yeah, this we can say this provides or contains fresh air for the egg, okay, like majorly oxygen. Yeah, so this is very important to note. You can say provides fresh air to the, to the egg. And then, uh, and then I just look at, yes, uh, have you looked at this? Remember, this is very important. You can be asked different, the naming the parts, looking at the functions. So 
Yes, we have looked at that. And then uh, we can move to number two of this activity here. Yes, you're given number two. It says digestive system. Oh, yes, of a hen. Yes, so the diagram here shows digestive system of a hen. You are you given the questions here to answer. Like, um, look at, uh, yeah, look at number one here, which is A. A, you asked, name the parts A, B, C, D, and E. So from our diagram, we can check here. Uh, look at, uh, look at part, part A. This simply, yes, from here, I will have part A here. Uh, this simply called crop. Yes, the crop, okay, contains. Moisture, liquid. So this function, it keeps or it makes uh, the feeds for the bird like grains, small, soft and moist. Okay, okay. Measure the first moist and then make it soft. So look at this. So when you ask the function of this part here, you can say to make feeds for the bird. Okay, moist and soft. Yes, uh, that's why when the birds feed these. Like majorly feed on grains like uh, uh, millet, uh, maize. So those solid uh, seeds, okay, they are very hard. So they are first kept in the in the in the crop here in the crop to make them soft. So once they are soft, they are sent the next part, which is a uh, uh, okay, which is the gizzard. So we can clean this, okay, yeah, and then uh, so these parts. Is the gizzard, okay? Part B, gizzard. When you look at the function of the gizzard, or before the function, look at the features of the gizzard. The, this part here contains small stones called grit. These stones will help in digestion of this of food, okay? Which has been taken by this bird here. So uh, we can say, they can ask you, what's the function of the gizzard? You can say, it helps in digestion of food. And then uh, look at this. You can be asked adaptations of the gizzard. Like, how is the gizzard adapted to its function? Meaning, how is it able to perform its function of, of digestion? We can simply say, the gizzard contains small stones called grit, which enable it to grind or uh, to break down food. Okay? So this is very important. And then uh, let us look at part C. Part C here, yes, uh, this is small intestine. Part C, small intestine. Okay? Yeah. Uh, just like human beings, you find that in uh, the digestive system of animals, like human beings, you find that this, this is where most of digestion takes, takes place. Actually, all in birds, the same thing happens. Most of the digestion takes place uh, in the small intestine, and it's where the digestion take, will take end. So simply, when you ask the function, you can say, uh, it's where the digestion takes end. Some can also simply look at the process, which is very important here, in this place here. And this part here is where absorption of food takes place, okay? They can ask you, where does absorption of food take place? Okay, you simply say in part C or in the small intestine. Okay, coming to this side here, uh, look at part D. Part D uh, is the large intestine. Large intestine. Okay, intestine. Yeah. So for the large intestines, these ones actually uh, have the same function compared to animals like human beings. Also, it's where, uh, the, uh, where absorption of food okay, takes place. They can ask you, which process takes place in the large intestine? It's, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, absorption of water. So water is removed okay, from undigested materials which, which remain here. And then they remain the droppings. So once the water is removed from, uh, from these wastes at this place here. And then here... Uh, what remains will be the wastes, okay? Which will be sent, let's do this part here. Part, uh, okay, this part, uh, part, uh, okay, will be sent down out of the body, but you can go to part, uh, part E, yes. Part E, uh, this can be called sicker, okay? 
Okay, it's different from human beings. From the being, human beings to be our uh, human beings and the rabbits shall call it a sikam. You shall put to be here, it will be C it will be C U M. Okay? But for the papa for the case of a bird, it is called the sika. This part here, uh, uh, okay, uh, look at this. Simply the simply as you compare to the that of, of, of the, the of the rabbit. Yeah. Let us uh, move to the next part from here. And uh, don't you forget there are some parts which are, are not asked in this in the case of this question here, but we can name them, okay? Yeah. Uh, look at this part here. Look at the, the beak. Okay? This can be called beak. Okay? Yeah. The part which you can still go on, okay? Uh, look at uh, yes, you can have the part here. This can be called gullet. Okay? Or esophagus. And then uh, from there, yes, there's a part here which is also not named. This part here, okay? Yeah, this is uh, simply in the birds, we can call it vent. Yes, as simple as like that. This is where actually the droppings are sent out of the body. Um, uh, this is uh, very important. Uh, we can uh, look at, uh, they can ask you different questions, okay, which you we can find uh, with this topic or question. Let us uh, uh, simply look at this. Yes, so when you ask, uh, still there, you can be given the questions, okay, for the purpose of revision. Okay, this is very important, okay? For the purpose of revision, uh, they can ask you different questions, okay? Yes, so remember, uh, there are questions like, uh, you can be asked uh, about the bird, Okay, yes, uh, the important processes, they can ask you, which important process takes place in the large intestine? Yes, simply we say that uh, uh, in the large intestine, it's where absorption of water takes end. Yes, and when, we, when you come to the small intestine, they can also ask the important process that takes place in the small intestines. Simply, yes, we say that that in the small intestine is where absorption of food, yes, takes place. Uh, so this, this brings us to the end of our lesson today. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we've looked at a, a couple of questions and uh, you'll actually be looking at this or it's go through your questions. And uh, yes, this will be good as you go through because we have, we will be provided with different uh, couple of, of, of questions. Check uh, your soul to access this always uh, for uh, BTN TV. Check on YouTube, you'll be getting them, okay? Yes, uh, follow the Wisdom Center website and then uh, WhatsApp group, you'll be getting these questions for revision. Thank you, wish you the best.